Sometimes, unexpectedly, out of nowhere, our lives are interrupted due to a crisis. And such was the case for my wife Hillary and I, and all who were in attendance as we were watching a show on Broadway this Tuesday evening. In the middle of the second act, we heard noises from the front row. A person got up and, and sprinted towards the back of the theater. There were more noises, what sounded to me like choking, and people standing, but the actors went on with the show. A half minute passed, then a minute. The noises, the standing, the acting, until a fellow theater goer said, hey man, someone needs help, stop the show. Then the actors broke out of character and turned their attention to the person in need. A doctor jumped in and joined the team of people. Someone yelled, get some juice from the bar. I have juice, said an audience member nearby, and soon a box of OJ was making its way hand by hand to the front row. The lead usher asked everyone to remain in their seats. Soon EMS arrived and the audience applauded and they carefully escorted the affected person out. The actors then acknowledged all those that had helped the person who had, it turned out, an epileptic seizure. Then the lead actor invited everyone to take a breath, and most of us did, and then they went on with the show. This week's Torah portion, Tazria shares ancient protocol for what to do when lives are interrupted due to a crisis. Specifically in this portion, the predicament of a member of the community having what the, cor the Torah calls tzara'at, a visible ailment of the skin. The portion goes into much detail with regard to attending to the person. The high priest and the other priests, known as kohanim in Hebrew, play a featured role in this portion, as does the entire community. Curiously absent, though, is God. The events of Tazria are not as dramatic as, hey man, stop the show, someone needs help. But regular life in the Torah is paused for the community to address the citizen with Sara'at. One can imagine the fear that could come from living next to and with someone with a noticeable skin disease, fear of the unknown, panic due to possible contagiousness, and a desire from some to have the affected person moved far away from everyone who was normal. And yet, when one reads this portion, one sees the affected person is not ostracized. On the contrary, they immediately are given the attention of one of the priests who were at the time, besides Moses, the most important religious and political leaders of the Israelites. One of the priests is to examine the person with the skin disease face to face and either place the person into what is basically quarantine or pronounce them able to return to the community. The entire process is geared to caring for the person who has the skin issue, keeping the community calm and eventually keeping the community together. We're currently reading from the book of Leviticus in the Torah, the third book. This book is dominated by rituals connected to the ancient practice of animal sacrifice. It was not prioritized as early Reformed Jews as a, a text to study due to its focus on sacrificial rites. Over time, though, liberal Jews like us have paid more attention to these sacrificial rituals and the portions like Tazria, which in a clear and sophisticated way provides us with wisdom on how we humans can care for each other and remain in sacred, healthy community. Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel taught that every deed counts. Every word has power. And I can imagine that this portion of Tazria inspired these words of his. 
Yes, when I read the procedures described in Tazria, every deed counts and every word matters. We can see it in how the community is calmed by having the high priest engaging respectively, respectfully with the person who is ill and the words of the priest declaring a person ready to return to the community. Equally important in this week's portion are the absence of words of hurt, hate, or fear-mongering. The Torah gives no oxygen to these voices which were surely present. We moderns can and should take a page out of this week's Torah playbook. Whether we're dealing with someone with a type of medical event or a social ailment among us, we need to be putting in place practices, safeguards to keep our communities healthy and together. Every deed counts and every word matters. Medical illnesses are, in my opinion, easier to address. Just like in the Torah portion, it is not God who is responsible for resolving the situation. It's each and every one of us. Our Torah is saying it's up to us to say, hey man, stop the show. Someone needs help. It's up to us to say, it seems like you're struggling. Tell me what's going on. It's up to us to give attention to those who are communicating to us formally or informally that they need our help. Social ailments are tougher. Can we really find a way to listen to people with very different opinions than ours? Can we help to arrest the polarization among us and the plague of hateful words and behavior that we are too often witnessing? We must try. Rabbi Heschel once attempted to encapsulate our traditions, commandments, and charge with regard to how to address each other and the social tzara'at among us. He said, what does it mean to be human? His answer, I have to have a concern for fellow human beings. It's very easy for me to become cruel, callous, mean, violent, very easy. Discipline is necessary, he said. I am obligated to keep in mind the priority to be concerned for others. Tazria's words describe an ancient form of this discipline. It's up to us to translate Tazria's discipline into our time. We can start by following the motto of the priest's face-to-face -face attention to the person with Sarat. When we encounter a person, perhaps they are a neighbor, a friend, a family member with someone who is sharing an opinion that causes part of us to want to isolate them, we must be disciplined and engage like the priest in examining and listening to them and at least give us a chance to both understand each other and show respect. We do not have to agree. We can honorably disagree. We can also choose to maximize our focus on what binds us with the larger goal of staying connected. Many of us may find us engaging in this person-to-person, face-to-face activity soon around the Passover Seder table. When Uncle Lenny starts to make us crazy, let us keep the power of this portion in mind and focus on the discipline of staying concerned and connected to each other. Minimizing our inclination to, to separate or worse. Reach out to us clergy and your friends to keep you on track. We can help each other prioritize our concern for one another and our sanity and our togetherness. Let us find ways to stop and 
appropriately address the sara'at that is presenting itself among us so that we can get back to the show of living our lives together. Long ago, our ancestors paved the path for us to do so. Let us honor them and each other by following their wisdom. Shabbat Shalom.